Oh, so I'm, I'm <laughs> kind of shifting gears, but not really. Um, I've been, I'm, I'm preaching. I just started a sermon series last week on giving and, uh, and, uh, and so, um, I've been hesitant. I, I told y'all this last week, but there's some of you guys that are here this week that weren't here last week. So I, I want to tell you, I, I've been really, really hesitant to preach on giving for a long time. And the reason for that is, is simple because every time I say the word giving, everybody in the whole church thinks money and, uh, and I don't necessarily think that that's all that it entails. There are going to be some times in this in this series where I talk about money, but it's going to be mainly about just giving of your heart and giving of your passions. And and, and so I'll, I'll explain all that as we get into it. Uh, one of the reasons I've been hesitant to preach on this subject is because there's been so many areas I think we all can admit in the body of Christ where money is concerned and 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 so it, it put me in a position where I just like man I just don't ever want to be that guy you know where we talk about it at all. And then about a couple months ago I, got, I felt this conviction of the Lord that I was kind of selling you short if I didn't give you the whole counsel of Scripture and that if I didn't tell you all the beautiful things that come with giving. Now uh, again I, I said this last week I said it again this week I'm not sure that um, and everybody you don't have to agree with this next sentence uh, that I'm getting ready to say but I, it's just what I feel. Uh, uh, after studying scripture, I'm not sure that tithing is necessarily a New Testament principle, but I, but I know that giving is. I, I believe that giving is a principle that goes from Genesis to Revelations. And I think what you give, uh, it can in some measure release, and maybe even great measure release uh, God over your finances, your time, and your efforts, and your passions. Because uh, I think if you're, if, you're, if you're a giver, that God is... Uh, uh, more more of a giver. In other words, you can't outgive God. And so, uh, while some of this will be about money to some of you guys, in fact, somebody came up to me last week and a uh, week before I said, "You getting ready to do a series on giving?" I said, "Yeah." They said, "I feel the conviction already." And I was like, well, "I ain't started yet." You know, how about you let the Holy Spirit be the determiner of that? But anyway, one thing that I uh, I talked to you guys a, a lot about last week was kind of in the in the preliminary part was. I mentioned in the bullet points last week about Matthew 6, the, the, the when you chapter of Scripture. We're going to kind of break that down a little bit today. We'll come back to it again at the end. But Matthew 6 is a, is a, is a, is a, is a chapter in the Bible. It's, Jesus was preaching the Sermon on the Mount. In fact, it's his first sermon in Matthew 5, 6, and 7. And he gets to this one section where he's talking to his disciples, people that he's discipling people he's training up and he he starts three different sections of matthew 6 with the words when you like the first one is when you give the next one's when you pray and the last one's when you fast and it, it just kind of dawned on me that that one of the most uh, you know some, sometimes we read scripture and we miss the obvious uh but if if god in scripture jesus is speaking it's in red letters in some of your bibles if he says when you and then he says, anything after that, there must be some expectation on his behalf that we're going to actually be doing that. So if he says, when you give, uh, and he goes into this explanation of what that's going to look like, the, the point is that he expects that you're going to be a giver. If he says, when you pray, then there's going to be there's some expectation on his part that, that you're going to be a person that prays. When he says, when you fast, obviously there's some expectation on his part that you're going to be fasting. If, if Jesus uh, knows what you're going to pray, let's just go with the when you pray one for a second. If he knows what you're going to pray before you pray it, then why do you need to pray it? It's a good question, right? Uh, well, to answer that question is simply this. When you, when you bring a prayer request before Jesus, it's not like God didn't already know what you're going to ask, right? Y'all with me? You, God can't not know what you're getting ready to ask him because God's God. He's all-knowing. He's omniscient. He's omnipresent. He's everything and more. All right, so why would God have me bring prayer and petition before him that he already knows I'm going to ask? And the answer to that question is simply this, that God doesn't have me bring petition before him and prayer before him because I need to remind him of what I need. God reminds me to bring it to remind me of what I need and to remind me that I have come to one who can handle my need, right? So ultimately, whether you're talking about giving, praying, or fasting, it's a faith action, just like a while ago when I said, you know, anybody in this room that's dealing with something really, really hard, I'm going to ask you to walk up here into this section. The fact that you walked up here into this section was an action of faith. It was, a, it was, it was an act of faith. You, 
You, you, you, does that mean that God can't bless you in the parking lot or in the bathroom or not even being in the building? But when I gave you that opportunity a while ago, you, you got out of your seats, you marched down the aisle, and you walked to this section. Why? Because you, have a, you had an expectation in you that there was someone bigger than you that could handle what's happening in you. Right? So, uh, so what, what, I, what I got up this morning, and I, I just began to, to remind myself of, of, of the three beautiful things of the winnews, the, the giving, the praying, and the fasting. And I want you to know they're all acts of faith. And so I wrote these, this, this stuff in my journal this morning, and I thought, well, this would be a good thing to kind of kick off the sermon with and let you guys know what, what I felt like the Lord reminded me of this morning. So faith, we can agree that prayer fasting and and before i leave this room today you actually agree that giving is an act of faith i'm going to show you in scripture that it is all right faith releases an expectation in in me and it gives god permission to bless my life some of y'all need to let that sink in for just a second faith releases expectation inside of me and allows for God to bless my life. In other words, what I mean by that is that some of us are walking outside the blessings of the Lord because we simply don't believe God will do it. We don't believe God can do it. If it, God, God can do anything, right? Everybody agrees with that. But, but one, of, one, of the, one of the ways that God can be restrained is in my lack of, of belief in what he wants to and can do for me. If 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 you if if you if you pray prayers like, well I I I know you can but I know you're not going to do it God because you don't really like me you you, you know I'm I'm a terrible person and you're never going to do anything for me and I don't even know why I ask you anyway Amen. You probably didn't have a lot of a breakthrough with that you know what I'm saying. What what God wants to have happen in you is you to have a prayerful expectation when you pray that by faith God I believe that you are my healer. By faith, God, I believe that you are the director of my life. By faith, God, I have an expectation in me that you want to make something of my life. Most of you people that are dealing with an identity issue in your in this room have have had your faith squashed in the area of of, of value. You 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 don't you don't pray prayers like God. I believe that you have a wonderful plan for me. God, I believe that you have a purpose and a, and a reason for my life. I believe that you have a wonderful reason for me being born on the earth. If the enemy can squash that in you, what he squashes in you is a faith and an expectation that God has something great for you. And if you lose the heart or even the belief that God has a great expectation and a plan to to prosper you in your life and to give you a, a future and a hope, what happens to your future and your hope is it dissolves. Not because God doesn't care about you, but because you quit believing that God cares about you. You understand that? I'm just teaching a principle here, all right? So, in other words, faith uh, releases expectation in me and actually gives God permission, because I'm aligning myself with his word, gives God permission to bring blessing over my life. If I believe that prayer, giving, and fasting are, 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 are faith-based, uh, then it's going to change the way I do them. For instance, let me say this to you. If faith releases expectation for giving God permission to bless my life, then prayer releases expectation in me and gives God permission to do the miraculous in my life. See, prayer is a whole lot more than just giving God a list. Prayer is, is, is communion. Prayer is worship. Prayer is a million other things. But, but ultimately, what's, what's going on when you have prayer life, when you, when you take the time to believe that there's a, a, a creator of the universe, that is, there's a God who is the King of kings and the Lord of lords, and you take the time to have conversation with him, because prayer don't have, to be, it don't have to be fancy. I was convinced when I was a little kid, I've told you this before, that I would never get to pray in church, because I could only speak regular English and not old English. Y'all know what I'm talking about. Some of y'all were in churches where they had the morning prayer and they 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 preached they they prayed in another language, even though it was English. It was like old English. It was like thousands and those and that. And I was like, I'll never get that because I can barely speak English. You know. So what I'm saying is, is 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 prayer is is any way you do it, it's just a conversation with God. But the basis for you having conversation with God is that there is a God. You don't have conversation with people that you don't know exist unless you're like crazy. You know what I'm saying? 
But what, what, listen to me. If you, if you take the time to have a, a moment of prayer, there's two things going on. You actually believe that what you say matters, and you believe that who you're saying it to is real. Right? So what does prayer do? Back to the point. Prayer releases an expectation in me and gives God permission to do miraculous in my life. What about fasting? Is fasting an act of faith? Yeah, fasting releases expectation in me and gives God permission to break strongholds in my life. That's what fasting is. Fasting is a a dying of sorts. It's a a part where you deny your flesh. Why? For the purpose of of entrusting your strengths to God and say, listen, I I got strongholds that are pounding over my life, over my children's life. The Bible says about fasting that there are some things in your life that won't be destroyed except by prayer and fasting. So God gives us the gift of fasting. Why? Because it releases in me when I start doing it a belief and an expectation that there's a God that has a desire to break off the strongholds of my life, whether it be addiction, whether it be uh, family history, all kinds of things that can happen that when, when we begin to fast. So fasting is, is a release in me, but it gives God permission to break strongholds. And then finally, giving releases expectation in me and gives God permission to release provision over my life. See, some of us are bound up in in terrible financial situations because we actually believe that we're in control of our finances. If I come to you and I say, listen, do y'all believe, and you can answer this question out loud, do you believe that that having a prayer life is a spiritual thing? Do you believe that having a fasting life is a spiritual thing? And be careful with this next answer. Do you believe that giving is a spiritual thing? Yeah, but the problem is the churches, we generally don't. We think that, that prayer and fasting are very spiritual, but we think the money belongs to us. And what God is trying to convince us in Scripture is this. If you will let your act of prayer, your, your verbiage to me, your conversation to me, if you will let that be spiritual, then I'll bless you spiritually. If you will let fasting be spiritual, then I can bless you spiritually. And if you'll let your giving be spiritual, I can bless you in giving. Does that, does, is this making sense to you? I'm going to prove to you before we leave here today that it is an act of, 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 of spiritual obedience. It's a, it's a spiritual thing. In the same way that praying and fasting is spiritual, giving is too. And, and God wants to bless all three of those areas of your life. And if, but if, you, if you're withholding, and I'm not just talking about money, y'all. Some of y'all are sitting there thinking, he's talking about money. No, I'm not just talking about money. I'm talking about giving of your time. I'm talking about giving of your efforts. I'm talking giving of your passions. If you will let, if you will give of your passions and, and they're filtered through the spirit of the living God, the thing that you attach yourself to with your passion will be blessed in a different way because you ran it through God's economy. If you run things through God's economy, God's economy will bless better than your economy. You, if, if, you, if you want to talk about money, I don't mind doing it, but I'll tell you this. If, if you think you can do better with your money than God can do with your money, then you're, 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 you're crazy. There ain't a thing you got in your life that God can't do better with it than you can. You understand that? Okay? Now, that's going to bring me to the win news, because what I want to do is this. Uh, not only do I want you to know that these three things are spiritually and equally spiritual to one another, uh, but that God has a plan to bless you in all three of those if you release those three things to you, to him. But one of the things that God finds very, very necessary when it comes to bringing these spiritual disciplines to himself is that you come with the right heart. And, and that's what we're going to get into with the wind news. So anyway, this first note was the thing I've already kind of told you about. Anytime we see the words win you in scripture, it stands to reason that God fully expects these things to be present in our walk with him. If I told David Creech, when you run to Walmart tomorrow morning on the way over here to the church, can you grab me a pack of gum? That would, that would mean that I had an expectation that he was going by Walmart or understand that he was going to go by Walmart. And while you're there, bring me some gum. By the way, if you go by Walmart tomorrow morning on the way, you can bring me some gum. All right. So uh, let's look at the first one. Now, I'm, I'm going out of order with these, and, I did, and I'm doing that on purpose. If, you, if you're looking at Matthew 6 in your Bible, what you're going to find out is that the when you give one is the first one, when you pray is the second one, and when you fast is the third one. I'm going out of order for a reason. I'll get to that in just a minute. I'm going to start with when you pray, which is kind of in, the, uh, in verse 5 of the, of the book. It says this, when you pray... Do not be like hypocrites, for they love to pray standing in synagogues and on street corners to be seen 
by others. In other words, there are people that actually, if you, and you don't have to answer this question out loud. In fact, I'd rather you not. Anybody ever been around people that like when, you, like when you're with them in a group of people and, they're, and you're having like some prayer time and they're like, the people that are like, they just pray for like weeks. And they're like, pray louder. And they pray like in this other kind of voice, you know, that they don't generally talk in. You know, they're just like, it's almost like they've, I've arrived to pray now. We can start our prayer service now because I'm here. There, there are people that, that undoubtedly in scriptural times where in, in back, back when this was written that actually like to promote self. Why, why, why is there such a warning in scripture in all three of these areas that we, got, we watch our heart? And here, here's the answer to that question. As human beings, we are always tempted to lean over into the space where we get to take some credit. For instance, if I'm a person that really, really prays good, then you're going to think, man, I'm a really great prayer warrior. He must be really connected to Jesus. Mike has like this authority and this, 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 this uh, rank with God that's higher than everybody else's. If we're not real careful, we'll try to promote that. And the enemy knows how, how, how easily it is to distract us from spiritual back to flesh. So God wants to warn us. You want, you want God to, to be present in your prayer life? You want, God to be, you want God to be active in answering your prayer life? You want God to be in communion with you in your prayer life? Then here's what you need to have happen. You need to have a different kind of heart when you come before him. Don't, don't be like hypocrites. Don't just pray standing in synagogues and on street corners so you can be seen by men. He says, truly, I tell you, you have received your reward in full. In other words, if you want to if you, if you, if you get the credit of men, if you want to walk in a place where people think you're spiritual and you're, you're, you're being religious just for the purpose of being religious so that everybody sees that you are religious, then there's your reward. You got your reward. If you're, if you're pursuing men's faces and you want to, and you want to find their approval and you get it, then you just got your reward. But God's warning against that. He said, listen, don't look for the reward of mankind in your prayer life. That's, that's not the goal. The reward of your prayer life is that you're in communion with the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. Spurgeon said, listen, God is more about the weight of your prayer than he is the length of your prayer. God, God is weighing your prayer. How, do you, how does he weigh your prayer? He weighs your prayer connected to how much your heart is connected to it. So don't be like hypocrites who like to stand in places where they're seen by others. I tell you, they receive their reward in full. But when you pray, go into your room. He's talking about going into a private space. God's not against you having prayer where you sit around in a circle like our ladies do on Tuesdays and Thursdays and pray. He's not, he's not against you having uh, a circle where you go out and pray. He's not against you being in rooms where people take turns praying. He's not against that. But what he's saying is, listen, watch your heart when it comes to your prayer life with God. I, I want you to make sure that this is personal for you and that you're not just doing it to toot your own horn. He said, and the safeguard for that is, is that you, you find you're a secret pursuit of the Father. And if you don't have a secret pursuit of the Father, I would encourage you to get one. In fact, I'll say, I even go this far, and I don't want to sound judgy, but if you don't have a secret pursuit of the Father, then do you really know him? He says, you need to go into your room and close the door and pray to your father who is unseen. And then your father who sees what is done in secret will reward you. And when you pray, don't keep babbling like pagans. You know where that word babbling comes from? You know what word we get from that? Blah, 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 blah. All right. He said, listen, don't keep babbling like pagans do. They're not saying anything. They're just trying to be noticed for their many words. For they think that they will be heard because of their many words. Do not be like them, for your father knows what you need even before you ask. So, so there it is. There's the answer. He knows what you need before you ask. Then why are you praying it? Because it's not a reminder to him. It's a reminder to you. It's a reminder to you that you release the expectation of your heart by faith to a father who wants to be in relationship with you and communion with you. God wants to do blessings on your life. God wants to bring blessing on your life. God wants to have communion. Listen, the greatest blessing of your life is the communion with the father. Your obedience is, 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 is half the battle. The, the, the real treasure of being in a relationship with Jesus is, is, is this, is, is the relationship. He's the treasure. And so you should, you should want that. 
If, if you're only doing this spiritual thing right here, coming to church so everybody can see that you're coming to church, then you miss the whole point of coming to church. It's, it's not about wearing nice clothes and everybody seeing you and you coming up in here going, oh, yeah, I'm spiritual because I go to church every week. Let me tell you something. You can go to church every week and be lost. Most of y'all walked through a garage this morning on the way out of the house. That don't make you a car. It's because you're in the building don't mean you're a Christian. And if you're in the building only to make sure everybody saw you in the building, then you missed the whole point of being in the building. If you're in a relationship with him so, so you can tell everybody, hey, I'm the best Christian that ever was, you, you're not. You're just not. Because if that's the motivation for it, you missed the whole point. But when you pray, when you want to be, you want to have an expectation to release God's blessing over your life, then have a right heart. Because that's, that's point number one. All right, when you fast, let me ask you this. When you fast, do not look somber as the hypocrites do. For they disfigure their faces to show others that they're fasting. What does that mean? It means undoubtedly he wouldn't have to write this unless somebody was doing it. They come in and put makeup on themselves and make themselves look all pale and be like, don't ask. I just had not eaten. I'm not eating anything in three days. I've been fasting. I'm not supposed to tell anybody, so you don't either. You know, you ever met anybody like that? Like every time they do something good, they're like, "God, tell everybody." I'm just, I'm just, I'm just feel like I can't hardly stand up because I've been fasting for a week. But don't tell anybody. Well, you're telling everybody. They ain't, don't, no, no, worry about them having to tell anybody because you're gonna tell everybody. What's he saying? He said, "Listen, it's a, it's a private thing. Private pursuit brings public reward." Private pursuit brings heavenly reward. Only doing things publicly and never privately will bring no reward at all. You understand that? He said, don't, he said, don't disfigure your face so other people will think you're fasting. Truly, I tell you, they've received their reward in full. What does he mean? If you're looking for the approval of man, you'll get it. All right? He said, but when you fast, put oil on your head and wash your face. He's not talking about like, you know, he's, he's just talking about, that means, that word means like you just go through the normal things of day and, 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 and look normal. He said, just put oil. If y'all come up in here, you people start fasting, and y'all be like coming up in here and like oil dripping off your head. That's, that's the same problem as the other one, okay? Don't be coming up here with oil dripping off your head, okay? That's not what he means by that. You'd be like... I've been fasting, but I ain't telling nobody. You got oil dripping on the floor. That's the same thing, okay? What he's saying is just be normal. Live normal. You don't have to act like you, you don't have to look like you fast, and you don't have to act like you fast, and if you fast and it's private, just fast. Just It's you and Jesus, amen, okay? He said, listen, just put, you know, t- take, make sure you put oil on your head and wash your face. You need to wash your face anyway so that it may not be obvious to others that you are fasting, but only to your Father who is unseen, and then your Father who sees what is done in secret will reward you all right and then finally the last one when you give same thing so when you give to the needy do not announce it with trumpets now he's talking about he's not talking about necessarily even here about you giving money to the church he's just talking about in general when you when you are doing things for other people say you went to uh went through mcdonald's and you saw some homeless people there and you decided to go buy them a couple hamburgers and walk out there he's saying listen when, when you when you do that don't go out there and say hey Anybody else want to help the homeless people? Because I've been doing it for like five days. That's you blowing a trumpet. That's you saying, listen, I did this. I did great. I'm the best. I am the one serving the community with hamburgers from McDonald's. You know what I'm saying? He's saying, listen, stop. You don't, you don't need to announce what you're doing. Trumpet, listen, your greatest reward will be the one who sees you from that perspective. So listen, don't be, don't be given to the need and announce it with trumpets as hypocrites doing synagogues and on the streets to be honored by others. Truly, I tell you, they have received their reward in full. But when you give to the need, do not let your left hand even know what your right hand's doing so that your giving may be in secret. Then your father who sees what is done in secret will reward you. You see what I'm saying? So what my point was, why, why, are, you, why are you preaching this sermon? Simply is this. Because I think we have an easy time believing that prayer and fasting are spiritual 
uh, disciplines to the Lord, but I think we have a hard time believing that giving is. I think we think God can be in charge of our prayer and our fasting, but we got to be in charge of our money. And what I'm encouraging you to do is, is to see all three of these as equally important in spiritual disciplines. How do I know that? Well, this next scripture. Now, in this scripture, I told you, and I, I know I went out of order and I told you I did, that it begins with the first couple of verses in Matthew 6. Y'all look down, see, tell, right? Talks about giving. Am I right? Shake your head, okay? Then the next part talks about prayer, right? Shake your head. And the next part talks about fasting. Am I right? Shake your head. Then, but why is this at the bottom then? Because every time I read this scripture to anybody anywhere, it's do not store for yourselves treasures on earth where moths and vermins destroy, where thieves break in and steal. Every single time I've ever read that scripture, happened in me for a long, long time. It happens just about everybody I read it to. They automatically believe I'm talking about money. Let me tell you something. If, if, if he wanted this to be connected to him talking about money, giving, it would be Matthew 6, 5, not Matthew 6, 19. Why do you think he came and wrote this at the bottom of the page after he got through talking about giving, praying, and fasting? And the answer to that question is simply this. Is he considered all three of these things as treasures? He considered all three of these as treasures and disciplines of the faith that will transform your life. He wasn't just talking about money. He's talking about, he said, you know, your prayer life is a treasure to your life. Hallelujah. Amen. It is. He said, your fasting life is a treasure to your life. Amen. It is. And he's saying your giving life is a treasure to your life, right? So what, what, let's, let's, let's loop them all together now and let's acknowledge that all three of these things are treasures. Now let's read that scripture. Don't store up for yourselves treasures on earth. In other words, don't just pray prayers that people hear. Don't just fast and announce it. Don't just do nice things and blow trumpets. But give these spiritual disciplines with your heart over to the Father and let them happen in secret spaces where God can reward you. These are treasures. Don't store up for yourself treasures on earth where walls and vermin destroy, where thieves break in and steal, but store up for yourselves treasures, your prayer, your fasting, your giving in heaven, where moths and vermin do not destroy, where thieves do not break in and steal, for where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. He's saying, listen, what's he saying? He's saying, listen, when it comes to your prayer life, that's a treasure for you. If you, if, you, if you show me your, your, your prayer life, and I don't want you to, because it's between you and him, let me change the wording. If you show him your prayer life, and it is a secret pursuit to have intimate fellowship with the Father, then what you're doing is you're putting treasure in heavenly places. If you, if you fast, and you, don't, and, you don't, and you don't have to announce with everywhere, and you don't have to make sure everybody knows you're doing it, but it's a private pursuit of the Father to break strongholds, to, to bring uh, intimacy with you, with, with you and himself, then, then that's a treasure in heaven. That's a blessing. And, in, and if your giving is in response to what the Spirit of God says to you, who, whoever, whenever, then it is a treasure. You are storing up for yourself treasures in heavenly places where rust and moths do not destroy and thieves can't break in and steal. What's he saying? That thieves can break in and steal things that you keep temporal, things that you keep earthly, but stuff that you place in heavenly places, only God touches that, and nobody's stealing from God. Does that make sense? So can we admit? Can we admit after reading this, and we find out that this part's written at the bottom of the chapter, uh, that all three of these things are spiritual disciplines given to us by God so that we might glorify him with where we put our treasure. So I want you to have a prayer life. I want you to have a secret pursuit of the Father. And I want you to have a fasting life. It's one of those we miss. We miss it. Most, I mean, some of, most of us have fasted some in our life, but we don't have regular occurrences of it. Why? Because it's not fun. I hate not eating. I love to eat. Y'all can see that. But anyway, my point is, but giving too. I mean, make sure that that becomes part of your spiritual discipline. Y'all are like, well, he's talking about money again. No, I said giving. I didn't say a thing about money. I do think it's important. I think some of y'all are locked in to, to, to 
financial curses because you think you're in charge. You know, like, well, that was a strong sentence. Now, I think it was a strong sentence. Here's what I'm telling you, that if you are, if you're release giving, I'm going I'm to repeat that thing I wrote in my journal this morning. If you release, what, what, what happens when you give is you create an expectation in you and you release God to bless you with provision. I believe it's a principle. I think the fact that I hadn't told you that before now is on my, it's wrong on my part. God wants to bless your life, but he wants you to give him your treasures. And if you give God your treasure, God will multiply your treasure. Now, don't, don't give God just to get from God. Do you hear me? That's, that's a bad, that's a, that's, a, that's a terrible way to start a relationship. If you're only in a relationship with people so you can get something from them, that is, that is not even a relationship. It's you, it's you pouring into God, God pouring into you. That's what, that's, what, that's what great relationships look like. It's a give and take. You know how you're going to get there? You let God have your heart. If you let God have your heart, then you'll give God your treasure. Because where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. Amen? Amen. Wasn't that easy? Oh, stand up then. We're, I'm done. We're going to keep adding to this. I believe God's up to something amazing with all of this. Uh, and the reason I'm, I'm going I'm to keep teaching you, listen, I, I believe more than any time in, since I've been pastoring uh, that we're in, we're in one of the most equipping times in the history of church life. I believe that I'm supposed to equip you. I believe I'm supposed to tell you every single thing. I think I'm discipling people. I think we got people in this room that are new Christians that, are, that, that don't know any of this stuff I'm talking about. And you just had that thing clouded for you for all this error that's going on in the body of Christ. And I feel like God is calling me to equip the body of Christ, especially here at Covenant. So thank you for being here, number one. But I think we're being equipped for a move of God at the end of the days. And it's going to be amazing. And you're going to be glad you were there. Okay? So... That's why we're doing it. And so hang in here, all right? Hang in here, all right? Let's do this. Father God, in the name of Jesus, I thank you for, for the treasures of heaven that have been given into our care. Lord, I thank you that, that you want us giving you our prayer time, giving you our fasting time, and, and to be just givers in general. I think you're up to something amazing with all three of them. And I think that when all three of these things are present in our existence, in our relationship with you, it will change the whole way we live life and the whole way we grow in you. So I just speak blessing over our church people today. I thank you to everybody that's in this building. I, I pray that you're drawing us to deep, deep places. May nobody get the wrong idea or be offended by the conversation we're having about your word. I just pray for protection you know, where the enemy would try to just bring uh, even, even like confusion right now. And I pray for just clear minds and clear hearts and, 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 and for intimate fellowship with you. As we leave this building to enter into our real mission field, I pray your protection over our people today. I pray that you'd protect us. I pray that you'd guide us. Those people watching online, I pray you'd protect and guide them. And that this week that we would honor and glorify you with all that we do or say. That So when people look at our life, they would praise our Father who is in heaven. And it's in his beautiful, mighty, amazing name above all names we pray. And everybody in the church said it. Amen. Amen. Y'all have a good week.